Good afternoon, everybody. This is Catherine Troutman from The Resume Place and the Federal Career Training Institute. And today's 30-minute webinar is going to be about how to write the SES uh, traditional ECQs for an SES application. And um, I am using our brand new book, Hot Off the Presses, second edition, the new SES application by me and Diane Hudson. So I'm just going to scroll through the book as a PDF, and um, you can buy this book on my website as a uh, print book or a PDF book, and it's right here. And there it is. It is $26.95 if you buy the print book with with shipping, and you can also get an ebook of the book. I, I like the print book myself. It's easier to look at because there's a lot of content in there. So that's, um, that's what we're doing today, is talking about this book. And not just the book, we're talking about, you know, how to get started and how to uh, deal with writing the ECQs. And I was just showing, actually, a minute ago, here is an announcement with EPA with uh, that's requiring the traditional package. And it says right here that to apply for this job, you need to have narrative responses to the to the ECQs, not to exceed 10 pages, and narrative responses for the MTQs and the desirable factors. And there they are. And that's what we're going to be talking about is leading change, leading people. And it's, you know, it's a lot to write. It's a 21-page document on average to apply for the traditional SES uh, application. It's really stunning, kind of, when you think about how executives in private sector will send in a two-page resume and a cover letter. And here we have 21 pages. But I am teaching this webinar because if you are very seriously going to be trying to, to apply for SES positions in 2016, you must work ahead. You cannot do this in one week. This is a one-month project. So having this little webinar can help you to think ahead. This is our table of contents, and I'm going to go through a couple of the chapters of what's important in here, and um, hopefully you'll get the book. If you're, if you're going to be writing an SES package, I highly recommend it. This is a picture of me and Diane signing the first edition of the book. And I have a couple of good tips up here about um, the mistakes that people make when they're writing their ECQs. Uh, some people focus on management instead of leadership. A lot of people use the term we, team, the staff, instead of saying I. And then, uh, of course, you have to single out important accomplishments. And then a lot of people talk about generalities instead of being very specific with their mission, budget, staff, and resources. These four tips are actually pretty good. That I just finished doing, when I wrote those, I had just finished um, doing a TSA contract helping uh, TSA people apply for the career development program for um, DHS. And so this, these are the common problems that I saw with all of their ECQs. So here is what we do when we teach classes. This is the first, this is page six in the book. And what I do, if you were sitting in front of me and we were teaching a three hour class or all day class, I would have you write your first accomplishment, something that you're most proud of in the CCAR format. Uh, the challenge of what you did, the context of what you did, the actions of what you did, and the results of what you did. And then we would brainstorm about this one accomplishment. And I want to show you one right here. This is a story of Sergeant Major somebody from Toby Hanna uh, Army Depot. And I was there about a month ago. And he came to the class, and he had not even begun his resume. He had his sick folder with him with all his evaluations in it, and he was looking at it like he didn't know what to do. And um, I, I sat down next to him, and I said, when do you need to have your resume written by? And he said, now. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, let's do this now. <laughs> so he opened up the notebook, and he came up with the, the last evaluation, and it had a whole lot of words on it, really small type, and I didn't feel like reading it. And I, so I said to him, can you tell me one accomplishment on this page that's really good? And it said that Toby Hanna was the number one industrial facility in the Army Material Command. And I went, wow, gee, so where are you in the chain of command here at Toby Hanna? And he said he was number two in charge of everything. 
So I interviewed him. He offered and uh, allowed me to interview him with the CCAR style. And this is the CCAR format of a storytelling for OPM. So the context of his story was that as a sergeant major at Toby Hanna, he directed and led a transformation and major reconstruction of the depot in an effort to reduce overhead costs. There's typos here because he was standing right there in front of the class doing this. The challenges were that he, they had to reduce over 2,300 personnel in two years, still accomplish the mission supporting the warfighter. The current workforce is now 4,000. Other challenges involved whatever. The actions that he took were that he analyzed the workforce, he studied current projects, customers. The base was very important for the region. So uh, he had to tie his accomplishments into that objective. And the results were headquarters did a study and reviewed of up based on metrics, productivity, lead to achieve the standard. And, and so they were number one Army in the IMCOM group of, uh, of um, Army depots. So that's a that's a story. That's a C car for. Uh, I think it's results driven. I think I would use that for results driven. I could use it for change if I wanted to, because change. I mean, there's a huge change, a huge reduction in force. They kept the mission. Really, it's results driven. And if we look over here at the definitions, results driven involves the ability to meet organizational goals and customer expectations. Inherent in this is to make decisions to high produce, yeah man, it's totally results driven. Now leading change is good too. Strategic change within, outside the organization, inherent is organizational vision. So if he great change examples, I might use it for change, but really, he led results to for, for Toby Hanna to remain or to become number one while reducing the workforce and managing customer expectations and everything else. So that's what we do here. We take the C card that you write and look at the story and figure out how to map it into the accomplishments. And this is the first thing that you should do is write a C card. Write one and go ahead and write the whole um Context, challenge, action, and results. Now, my uh, CCAR builder that I was using there is here on my website, and it's free for everybody. It's right here. It's an uh, accomplishment CCAR builder. You just fill in the fields here. There's the title of the story, the challenge of what happened, the, action, the context, which is where you were working and when, and what was going on, actions that you took, one, two, three, four, and then the results of what happened, and then you type um, five here and you click send. And there's your C card. It will come to you in an email looking just like that. So if you don't remember anything else from this little webinar, please just remember that you need to write 10 C card accomplishments to match the ECQs that map into these ECQs right here. So that's the deal. Takes time. So you can write 10 short examples with, uh, like I've shown you here. You can write 10 of these, just kind of quickie versions. And then somebody who's a good writer, editor, executive writer, has to turn this into a beautiful executive narrative that will be, you know, 5,000 characters. And right now, this is not 5,000 characters. This is just a story. So that's the beginning lesson right there is one C car where you're thinking about what you did, what the results were. And then here's some uh, information about the SCS in the book. And I want to scroll up to the next step here. So, you know, your SES application has two really important readers. The first is the agency. The agency will look at your resume and the technical quals first and decide if they like you. And if you're going to be best qualified and referred, goes against the resume and the TQs. Yep. Resume and TQs are first because it's agency first. And then if you get an interview, then they look at the ECQs to see if you could pass uh, OPM scrutiny. And then if so, you can go on to the QRB, and that's where they read the ECQs. The agency also reads the ECQs, but first they have to decide if they're going to hire you based on the technical quality that you have. Okay, now 
These are the five ECQs. They're in all the SES announcements. And so they're very serious. I like the ECQs a lot. I think they're excellent. I really do. And then these are some uh, cross-functional, um, cross-cutting functional competencies. You don't have to write to these specifically. You just have to prove them uh, in your narratives. This is a chart that comes from OPM that shows an executive, what an exec, the difference is between a supervisor, a manager, and an executive. That's really neat because it shows the levels of skills and um, some people who are supervisors think that they're okay for SES, but they're really not because they don't do strategic thinking. They don't use their vision. I mean, it's really quite different. Now, what we have you do to completely write a set of, of accomplishments with our book and in our training is we ask you to write a short top 10 list of accomplishments. And this is a, and I, and I do thank David Letterman for this idea. It was his idea. So here's a short top 10 right here. Anyone who's a true executive can write a top 10 in around three hours, maybe two hours. Because executives know what they've done. They know what they're proud of. They know what they've done that has made a difference in their mission. And you simply have to write it. So you write a short top 10. And then you look at it against the ECQs. And there's a short list. You can make a little table of contents. Like when I write a book, my number one thing that I do is create a table of contents. So you can, um, we have people uh, write short top 10 in our classes. And then you map the top 10 into the, EC, into, uh, the ECQs. So for example, if your accomplishment refers to change, creativity, innovation, resilience, and strategic thinking, then the story is about leading change. So you really, really have to look at the definitions of the competencies. Change is innovation, creativity, vision, strategic thinking. People is conflict management, developing others, and leveraging diversity. These uh, leadership competencies that are part of the ECQs are critical for you to get a good score. So these have to be very important. Print them out and put them um, on your screen or something. And then you map your top 10 into the accomplishments. And so you can number these, what, whatever would be change, whatever. I was looking at a top 10 the other day with a person, and he was super on business acumen. He comes from private sector, so he had like five for business acumen. I was able to analyze two of them and turn them into change. And results driven, he was great with. He had, we have to work on building coalitions, but he had no nothing for leading people. So I said, you know, you got to think about that. So here's mapping these accomplishments into the ECQs. And then you have to develop it into the C car. Now you can see why you can't do this in five days, right? So if you're going to go for an SES position in 2016, you need to get the book, write your top 10, work on your C car, use our C car builder. And get really serious. Get really serious. If, if you can't write one C car like every night or something, say to, say to yourself, 9 o'clock, I'm writing a C car. I'm going to write my top 10 over the weekend. I'm going to map them. And then you might want to get an editor to review what you've written to make sure it's executive writing and it's correct. So here's an example of a C car right here. And we've taken five examples and put them into the C car. One was the Iraqi Republic uh, Railway. Awesome story, wow. CEO equivalent, wow. He built this railway? All right, good story. Um, here's a FEMA story. People write the best stories. I'll tell you a story I heard from TSA. Oh my gosh, it was so exciting. She said she was on a family vacation in the Shenandoah, a whole bunch of family, like 20 people, and they rented a great big house. And she worked for TSA as the number one public affairs person, number one for TSA. And she started getting all these alerts on her cell phone like crazy. We're blowing up her phone. And uh, it was all about something happened in Detroit. Somebody was trying to blow up the plane, and it was a problem. And, and he, she was gathering all this information. She picked up her laptop. She went to a room alone somewhere in the um, cabin, left everybody, 
and had to deal with all of the initial reports of the underwear bomber, bomber that came and flew into Detroit. And she was sitting there in this house trying to deal with it as the number one public affairs spokesperson for this event that happened in Detroit. And she had to decipher what really happened and what the results were and what the situation was. And she put out the first official statement from TSA on the underwear bomber to the media, to Homeland Security, to all the law enforcement agencies, and it was right on. That was one of her stories for the CDP application. And we used it for um, leading change because it was a you know a very critical event that created a lot of change at TSA from then on. And it, she was the first person who wrote it. And we quoted her first sentence in the press release that she wrote in this room in the cabin. And I love that story. It's really a good story. I mean, you have stories to tell, things that have happened to you where you've had to re respond and use political savvy and decisiveness and, and vision and strategic thinking and, and problem solving at the highest level. That is what you have to write in your ECQs if you want to get an SES position, get hired by the agency, and pass the QRB. So here are some more examples of full C cards. So, all, and then uh, all of it, uh, you can read these key words in the vacancy announcements. We have announcements uh, throughout all of the all of the book. Here is um, the definition of the 27 competencies. So, as part of ECQ1, we have creativity and innovation, external awareness, flexibility, resilience, strategically envision. That underwear bomber story totally goes here. It's leading change. External awareness is huge. We had to be flexible. She was resilient. She was using strategic thinking. She had vision for the future. Yep, it worked. So we have a page in the book for um, insight and keywords. Now, these are the keywords that you would use in your leading change story. And then we've got the same thing for people. And, you know, people don't realize how important it is to lead people. Conflict management, you've got... I recommend a story on conflict managing, levering diversity. I don't, I don't have it for a fact, but if you don't have leveraging diversity in your ECQs, it's a problem. So you need to think really hard after we get off the phone here now about something you've done to leverage diversity. And that goes for cultural diversity, hiring people with disabilities, recruiting more students through pathways, bringing them up through the pipeline, retraining, recertification, um, Leveraging diversity in your organization. It is a global uh, government, so you got to really think hard about that one. Developing others is usually not that hard to hit. Okay, and then results driven. I, I this I mean, change is my favorite. Then results driven is number two because results is so um, important, and the competencies that you have to cover in results driven would be accountability, customer service, decisiveness, entrepreneurship, problem solving, and technical credibility. Each one of the ECQs has five to seven competencies within the accomplishment. That's why they're so hard to write. We write ECQs here, but we don't write them from scratch. We ask you to write your top 10 list of accomplishments. Then we help you map them into the ECQs, and then we help you uh, expand into the C car. It's a big deal. Business acumen. My client the other day, this is his big thing. I said, obviously, you're a businessman. <laughs> 16 ways to say you can manage a business. Okay, I only need two. <laughs> you can only have two accomplishments for each. Building coalitions, um, I have to coach on that one still. I will, I will uh, achieve that. So each of the competencies has a definition, and you have to match the definition. And then we have, in the book, we have examples of the ECQs that you can see. And I want to show you something in the back of the book that I don't think you've ever seen. There it is. Oh, here we go. ECQ grid. I love this thing. Oh, there it is. Wait, wait. You got to see this page first. Oh, look at the scoring here. Each rating will be made of a score of 1 to 4. 
So one says you have demonstrated expertise is unusually strong for initial SES2. Is demonstrated executive experience is sufficient to predict success. Three, demonstrated executive experience is sufficient to predict success, but early supplemental development is planned. Number four, limited. Uh, you want to be a one. And then the best evidence would be resume, accomplishment record, interview, verification, or some other um, document. And then here we go. This is the QRB grid. This is how your ECQs will be scored by the QRB members. And they're going to take the two examples that you have for leading change, and they're going to score them one through four on creativity, innovation, external awareness, flexibility. You see what I mean? Do you see how serious these competencies are? That's why a lot of people fail the QRB, because they just totally don't know about this. And this is public domain document. Somebody gave it to me, and it's legit that it's in the book. And there it is. So now you know this is very serious. You need to actually use this check sheet yourself against your own ECQs and see how you score yourself. When people send us ECQs, let's say for leading change, it's like really interesting how they don't really write about change. They just write about, a recent example was really good. She wrote about a whole lot of meetings to develop a strategic plan for an agency, and she called the meetings together, and she called the people together, and she had all these ideas for the strategic plan, and they met, and they talked, and they created the strategic plan, and it was they developed a successful strategic plan. <laughs> Guess what? That's not change. That's a bunch of meetings. So what, the way to turn it into change is to talk about the important elements in the strategic plan, and what was um, most important in the strategic you can't write about the whole thing because it's too much, but pick out you know two or three of the very important elements of the strategic plan and who thought of those elements, hopefully our client, and use the word I. I recommended that we add to the strategic plan this particular element in order to increase the mission of something, and then write about the change that you're recommending in the strategic plan, and then if it has rolled out, of course, you could write about what happened, and hopefully it was successful, but even if it wasn't rolled out, you need to write about what was unique and different in the strategic plan to meet a changing mission of an organization, not just the fact that you met and talked about and wrote a strategic plan. That will not cut it. So... This is very big, and it was not in our first edition book, but here it is, and I love it. I use it in all our classes, and it's like in my brain. Uh, structured interview, of course, is a test. Let me show you a resume before you go. We only have 30 minutes. You need the book. If you're going to SES, you, you, you need this book. Uh, we also put in here all the big reasons why the ECQs are rejected by QRB. Because we do a lot of rewrites for the QRB. People get rejected all the time. And, and what's really critical about it is that, let's say you work for TSA, and you apply for an SES position, and you're actually doing the job. You're sitting in the chair, okay? And ECQs go down to OPM, and they're rejected. So what has to happen then is that the ECQs have to be rewritten correctly. And the OPM sends a very clear letter along with the rejected statement saying what's wrong with your ECQs. And the, e the e QRB emails are very, very good. And here's a list of them. They will say uh, no, too many acronyms, jargon. Um, they want you to write stories that are relevant. And don't use stories that are over 10 years old. And... Please use I, so you have, this chapter is very good on what not to do. And we have very, very good success with um, QRB turnarounds. I call them turnarounds. This is a five-page SES resume. Some agencies ask for the five-page resume where you have to put the accomplishments right in the resume. And you can see the um, key leadership initiatives are here and the examples that demonstrate the uh, ECQs, very, very hard resume to write, very, very difficult, and very difficult for HR to score as well. This is another five-page resume. So this book has two samples of the five-page resume. 
uh, two samples of an executive resume and examples of ECQs. Here's more ECQs here. So around 25% of our business here at the Resume Place is SES related. Writing ECQs, coaching on ECQs, um, teaching ECQ writing in government agencies, and then our book. Our book is the best book on the topic. OPM has a good book too that's free. It's on their website. It's fine. You should get it and look at it. Ours works well with them. Ours is better because we have more details and more samples. Theirs doesn't have any good samples in it at all. They're very generic. They're okay, but our book's way better. You know, OPM doesn't like to give lots of good examples because they don't want to tell you how to write it. They just want to tell you about the format. This is a before. Look at this. It's pathetic. Really, really short. A few bullets about this job here. Okay, let's look at the after. So that's a really short little thing. There's his top 10 list of accomplishments. A couple of C cars. And here is the new resume, five pages, with a lot of detail for his current position. Leadership accomplishments added. These documents here are just full-blown writing. And, of course, I am in the business of providing writing services for SES, but it's a very, very good investment to get help with writing the SES application and try, instead of trying to do it all by yourself. We charge $190 an hour for our SES writing, and we give quotes to write our SES packages, whether it's ECQs or TQs or the executive resume. The book I highly recommend to start with and work on it some yourself. And after you work on it some yourself, then bring us in. These are the technical quals for the five-page resume. So the book has all kinds of samples in it that can help you to write your ECQs. Anybody have any questions on anything that I have spoken about here? Um, I do recommend that you get the book and take your time looking at it and work on the CCAR. Um, it does take time to do all of this work. Let me give you the web address for our CCAR Builder. It's right here. This is free and available to, for everyone to use. So you can write your CCAR Builder with that right there. And this is our, um, our SES book page. You can go and order it and um, have it for weekend reading and looking at the samples. And number one, you need to write your top 10 list of accomplishments so that you can begin to map them into the ECQs. Even if you were to work with us here at the Resume Place, the first thing I would ask you to do is write your top 10 list of accomplishments. And we would not start writing without it. It is a mandatory homework. Uh, we don't write first drafts of ECQs here. We take what you've got, rewrite it, tell you what's right or wrong, improve it and from there uh, we go from there. So I see Diane Hudson is on the line here. Hi Diane. Diane is co-author of the book and uh, we worked very hard on this new edition. Thank you Diane for all that you did on the book. And um, so thank you very much everyone. I was really glad that I could teach this again. We haven't taught it for a while but when the new book come out, came out I thought well it's time for me to start talking again and encourage people to write their top 10 list of accomplishments and most of all uh, please start ahead of time. You know, you need you need a month to do this. Uh, it is very sad when a person finds an amazing announcement in their own office, a job they hadn't counted on, and it's 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 one week away, and you need to write the traditional package, which is 21 pages. That, that's impossible for us to help you with, and probably impossible for you to do it. So, getting the ECQs written ahead of time is what you have to do. And if you're going to try to go SES, this is, this is part of your 2016 homework. And getting the book, of course, is very important. And thanks, everybody, for attending. I, uh, I hope you like it. Yes, Diane, we like the book a lot. She says it flows well. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day, and I'll look for your book orders. And if you want help with your ECQs, you know where to come, Resume Place. That's what we do. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day and a great holiday and a great 2016 for your SES aspirations. This is Katherine Troutman. Have a great day. Bye-bye.